there's a light in the darkness though the night that's it. oh okay all right come on sammy start hello shelly hello sammy <laughs> how are you i'm very well thank you so i'm just going to tell people what we're doing am i Yep. Thanks, Sally. So, um, my name's Sally. I work for Paradigm, but most importantly, I'm friends with Hazel and Sammy, who are sisters uh, who live in South London, and they've been asked to just share some of their story on camera, because um, they've had an interesting life, and they're achieving some wonderful stuff for Sammy at the moment. So, um, I think, Sammy, now we're going to hand the... Get your sister on field. Go on. That's it, Sammy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hazel. Sammy, you got me? Got me? Got yeah. me sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm Hazel, um, Samantha's sister. Um, Sammy and I have a very um, close relationship. I support Sammy in a variety of ways, and I'm here for her to share our story, parts of it at least. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to discussing things with you. Okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sammy. I'm Hazel's little sister. And. Um, uh, I've been interviewed yeah. with Shelley. Great, great. Okay, wine in hand, we can start. Yes. Okay, so you yeah. ready to tell a bit of your story? Okay, can okay. I ask some questions yeah. first? So, we've chatted a bit about this, haven't we, about how we're going to tell some of your story. And we're not going to go right back from the day you were born, because we'd be okay. forever, wouldn't we? Because you're getting older, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we thought maybe we'd start thinking about from 2013. Okay. So, do you remember what 2013 was like for you? Can you remember back and how you were feeling? Up, uh, fire, upset and depressed. So, why were you upset and depressed? Uh, I was not getting out of places and I can't do anything in the house. Yeah. 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 Mum, I'd say. So who's this picture? You know that picture of your mum's face? Yeah. yeah. So who's this picture of, Sammy? My mum. Okay. And what's your mum mean to you? Everything. Everything. Oh. <laughs> It's amazing. So even when you were unhappy in 2013, yeah. you knew your mum loved you big time, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And there's another picture that shows you at a day centre and there's a big red cross of you trying to get out because you weren't allowed to leave the day centre to go out, were you? No. How did that make you feel? Uh, there's anger and you won't let me do my own thing mm. and they're saying you can't go anywhere just stay indoors yeah and you've been going to the day centre for a long time haven't you yeah so you knew your mum loved you mm. you knew your sister loved you but yeah I, I think at that point when you and I were speaking you weren't sure anything else was possible no so you've been going to day centre probably since you were about 21 22 yeah, yeah. a long time wasn't yeah. it yeah we used to go as well, didn't we, to Ikea? Tell us about what, what we used to go to Ikea. Uh, when we were going to Ikea, me and Sally and Caroline were choosing things for Caroline's new flat and I was upset because I wanted to get my own flat like Caroline. Mm. Yeah. It used to make you quite unhappy, didn't it? Yeah. And we used to say one day we'll come here and buy things for you, Sammy. Um, and we won't say anything else yet because we'll give the, we'll give the, the plot away, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Okay. There's a light in the darkness. Chat to Hazel, Sammy. Yeah. yeah. So, Hazel, what's your memory of Sammy at home in the family up to around 2013? Um, it was pretty much the way it's always been. Um, Sammy at home um, with my mum, my dad. Um, very much it's a case of day service, home, the odd disco. Um, very odd disco. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was it. Yeah. Um, very sheltered, not a great deal was happening, and mm. that was kind of the norm, and mm. it was the acceptable norm. Mm. 
dare I say it. Mm. Um, Why so do you think that was? It's just the way it's always been. You know, the, the whole thing is to keep her safe. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if you're going out, there's all that question, what if? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. it just got into a routine where Sammy went out to day service. You know, she went on holiday with them sometimes. and But, you know, essentially, it was just home service, home service. And that was meant to be her life. Mm. And at that point, maybe your family didn't realise there were other options, maybe. Do you think that was the case? I don't... I don't think it really... The question rose in anyone's mind. Mm. Um, you, you just go with the norm, you go with the flow until someone or something happens to kind of change your thinking. Yeah. You just go with it. Yeah. Um, but clearly, I was frustrated by slump with life, but again, you know, you get into this routine. Um, but it, it wasn't right, it didn't feel right, yeah. but you, you kind of go with it. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's no excuse, but you go with it, because yeah. that's, that's just the norm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were told what to do. You had your annual reviews at yeah. the day centre, and you got more of the same every year, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's happened. I remember being seeing that happen. Mm. You you used the word hazel as well when you spoke before about you used the word invisible. Mm. So what do you mean by that in terms of Sammy? Um, invisible as much as I mean, we have there's five of us. Mm. There's six of us actually, and everyone you know gets on with their lives. You know the ups, the downs. The explorations, the all you know, all that life brings, everyone kind of like ebbs with it. Mm. With Samantha, um, it didn't apply. Um, she just was there, and there was no expectation of her doing anything other than being just there. Mm. Um, and she was invisible. Mm. You know, mm. things would happen, and yay, someone's got. <laughs> got engaged, someone's got married, someone's got a baby and but the expectation was that their smug would ever have anything other mm. than what she had. Mm. Mm. So she was invisible because mm. Mm. no one saw any, any different or expected mm. anything different from her mm. and I hated it. Mm. I absolutely hated it. You really did I'm gonna come on in a minute to how you yeah. shifted that and I think it's probably worth saying to people watching that what the, the family love you so much and what really scared them is you live with epilepsy, don't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, the epilepsy you have is, well, epilepsy is unique to everybody, but yours, mm-hmm. you can have very regular seizures, can't you? Yeah. And you can suddenly be on the floor. And I think your strength, and you know, you know, Greg, my partner's talked <laughs> for years, hasn't he, about you're just incredible, the strength you have to get up and mm-hmm. go out. Mm-hmm. You never lost the desire to want to go out. Mm-hmm. The family just weren't mm-hmm. sure how you could possibly live a fuller life and live with your epilepsy. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the thing. But you, what I remember, Hazel, um, you really saying clearly when we were eating pizza one night, was you said um, you got sick of hearing she can't because. Mm. Yeah. What happened in your head, in your gut? It just gets, I don't know, I just got sick of it. Mm. Because there's no reason why you can't explore. I mean, with life, with every, all of us, mm. you know, you take a step, you may fall, you get up, you try something else. There's no guarantees. Mm. And... More so Samantha, I think, if she got the right structure and people in place, she mm. has more of a chance of mm. getting it to work mm. than perhaps mm. myself or, mm. you know, you or any of, mm. any of our other mm. peers. Mm. And that's what I thought... I just want to train thought. That's okay. What was the question again? Well, the question was that, you know, um, Sammy being told you can't because... Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, and, and I thought, no. Something in you, it didn't snap, but it, there was it, something it was that no said, snap. you know what? It was, it, it was a case of, I can see that she wants more of life. You can see it. Mm. It's innate in all of us. Mm. You want more of life. Mm. We were created for that. Mm. And she was diminishing, and everybody else mm. just seemed to be, you know, mm. expanding and exploring mm. and wanting more of life and mm. doing. Mm. Mm. But... Because someone with epilepsy and it's volatile and it's unexpected and it's horrible to for her, must be clearly, mm. and it's dreadful to witness, mm. and you journey as well when she's mm. having really bad seizures and the accidents, the, the, the hospitals and the stitches and all of that. Mm. So I understand the need because I too have a strong desire to protect, mm. but there comes a point where you've realised that has to be more yeah absolutely. and you have to find a structure that will support you and to get that more absolutely and that's where i thought no we've, we've got 
to do it. So, Hazel was really listening to you, Sammy, yeah. and seeing and hearing you really mm -hmm. wanted something different in your life. Your family was still very worried, the rest of the family, and Hazel was worried because she loves you and wants you to yeah. be safe as well. But Hazel knew you, we needed to explore, so we came up with the idea, didn't we, of having a meeting that around my kitchen table that was called it's called individual life design isn't it so yeah. we sat with a big bit of paper and we drew pictures <laughs> and we talked about um, what we love about you mm. what people admire about you we talked about what a good day is for you and what a bad day is and we thought about how many good days and bad days you have but the big thing was we said what would you like to happen so Sammy do you remember that meeting what it was you said to everybody you wanted to do move out and get more to that wow and how did that go down, Hazel? Well, my mum was still not 100% on board, mm. but she was there, and, and that in itself was a positive move. It mm. took a lot for her to come yeah. to hear that, because I know right up until you actually left, mm. stepped out and left home, yeah. she was struggling. Oh, yeah, it was, was a big there. moment, because um, some said, you know, I actually want to leave home, and mm. there was no reservation there was no which was a coy it was very plain I want my own place mm -hmm. and so it was like okay then what does your perfect place look like okay. and that's when we started mm -hmm. Mm. and the colouring pencils and the stick the post-it yeah. notes and everything mm. came out do you remember what you said was important in the place you're going to live in the future what was important for you big rooms space and why were you saying that? Is it just because you want a luxury pad, or was there another no. reason? Or why, why were you saying big rooms then? Because I don't like small places. Yeah. I just like really big, big rooms, stand up and just walk around. And then what, one of the things as well was um, space so that you could A, walk around safely, as you said, right. but also so you could put cushions and make it as safe My as own. possible, make it your own. But mm. if you do fall and hit your hit yeah. yourself or what have you, mm. you've got cushions and mm. a nice mm. safe space mm. that be your own that you could call home. Yeah. Yeah. And you know if you if, Yeah. And if you knock into things, you said, Well, if I knock into things I'll have a seizure. <laughs> so you don't want to be yeah. walking into things yeah. in a tiny space because you want to feel safe and well. Yeah. I remember the really important bit as well, when I said to you both of you and your mum at that at that sort of sitting around the kitchen table uh, was well let's think of it from when you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed because what was really important as well is for your mum to see that no one expected mm. you to live without good support people know people knew that you needed support so we talked didn't we from the time you get up what do you do so can you get yourself dressed can you do this and of course you can I know you can and all that okay. sort of stuff so but talking through the day right from the time you got up the time you went to bed and we start to think about when might you need one-to-one -one support so you talk very clearly about in the bathroom you would need someone assistance. there assistance because yeah. if you had a seizure there yeah. so and there are times when actually you could share your support weren't there yeah. because if you're sitting watching telly you don't want a support worker on the couch next yeah. to you all the time <laughs> you, you want yeah. to chill so you need to have someone to call on yeah. and that was the bit it's, and that's how we worked out wasn't it okay. what type of support you needed and when you needed it yeah so okay so the meeting happened didn't it and we ended up with this big picture on a piece of paper it did. what happened with that then mm. a copy of that we each had a copy mm. and then a copy went to the social worker didn't yeah, it? I did yeah mm. Mm. and I have one it's still by your bed isn't it it is <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. it's still there but it went to the social worker and what was really important we spoke about you didn't want to go to the social worker and say we don't know what we mm. want yeah. You went to a social worker and said, this is what I want, you know, and, 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 and she read it, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. And so you may not, you didn't stick everything in the plan, did you? But it was very clear that you went as a family really strong to social service and said, okay, mum's in her 70s. Yeah. You know, sister lives out of London and things and yeah. you don't want to live with your sisters and brothers and things forever. Yeah. You want your own place. And then it started to happen, didn't it? So in 2013, was that the meeting with Lillian? That was, that's when we all got yeah. together and um, that, that working document that we worked on mm. came out on the table and it was very much, this is what we need and why we need it. And she said, oh, um, I know a provider that I can contact um, and we'll, we'll sort of um, pass it on to them and see you know, what they can do. And that's what happened. 
and that led to a conversation in the cafe yeah, yeah. that we'll come on to. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on to 2014. Okay. So, a lovely link from Hazel there. In 2013, you saw a social worker who said, Oh, I know someone who may be able to help. Hazel, what happened then? We met for um, coffee, informal gathering, um, and we just sat down and talked about what Sam was after, what she wanted, mm. and the type of support, um, where she wanted to live, and all of that sort of, the, the nitty gritty. Mm. And um, the provider, a lovely lady, she said, yes, we can do this. And you know, we'll involve you in, all, in ev at every step. We can make this work. Um, just give me some time and I'll, I'll come back to you. And true to her word, she did. It took us some time because one of the things that um, you wanted, Sam, wasn't it, was yeah. like big space, mm. ground floor, near mum, and a number yeah. of things and she really did try to make that happen but mm. in the area that um, Sam wanted um, ground floor flats they there weren't that many and we live when, in South London aren't we yeah, South West London yeah. pretty expensive and, and when it mm. when they did come on the market mm. there were about half a dozen people mm. vying for the one property so you know eventually they had to move further afield but the area that they found again was at the right property yeah. and um, in fact I think it's, it's not the ground floor, but the space, it ticks a number of boxes that Samantha wanted, mm. so. And what's important, you say that the, 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 the woman we met went away to look for the flat, because yeah. they rented it privately, didn't they? They didn't wait for housing yeah. stock from associates. We're gonna to go to an yeah. everyday landlord yeah, in the South of London, yeah. and we're gonna find a landlord, and they yeah. found a landlord, mm. and yeah. it's near to my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bonus. So I was like, yes, I can walk yeah. to your house. So we live in Putney, darling, don't we? Yeah. We do. <laughs> Do you want to tell tell people about who you chose to live with? Uh, my he's not a big brother to me. He's named Barry. And you've known Barry for years, haven't you? For years. Yeah. yeah. Good I know him from my son's at birthday. Mm. He does clips as a brother and sister. You've got a lovely friendship, mm. haven't you? And you, you were telling us earlier as well that when you, you know, when you used to be at the day and have seizures, we always barry you'd be there sort of stroking your arm mm -hmm. until you came round and making sure no one else fussed. And, and, I, uh, and then I, when he has his fits, I'm there. Yeah. When I have my fits, he's way there mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose, so, let's fast forward to, I think it's September, October, still in 2014, yeah. and the big move in day. What was that like? Really good. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was good. I'm going into my new flat. What was the most exciting <laughs> thing? That's the dog, isn't it? <laughs> Should we just get a picture of the dog? Yeah, it's the dog. It's not Sammy growling, it's, it's the dog. Okay, right, so what was the most exciting thing, do you remember? Oh, uh, getting my stuff into the flat. And going that shopping to get some things like uh, carpets, the living room, uh, and a lot of plates and knives, forks, spoons, everything. So Hazel did lots of that with you yeah, before you, didn't she, she as did. well? And where did we go together? Ikea. Yeah. Yay. And who did we buy stuff for? Me. <laughs> I was knackered. <laughs> so Hazel, what's your memory of move-in day? It was, it started really early. I was. I moved stuff in um, about a week or two prior, just the larger items. Mm. And on that day, we got really early, um, set up goodbyes, or used to be goodbyes. Yeah. We moved in, and, um, or rather Sammy moved in. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, it was just, I, I couldn't believe that the day had arrived. I, I, words can't express, because you never, you never thought it would really happen, but it mm. did. Um, it was an exciting day, it was a sad day, because it was an end of an era and the beginning of something new, which felt a bit scary, uncharted mm. territory. But you were just 
bounced off the walls because mm. you were happy. I was. You were there with Barry mm. and staff was there and everything looked, you know, the potential mm. and it just looked, you know, as though life was beginning. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah. And mixed emotions because your mum still wasn't convinced, was she? Yeah. Way, she still was very. Um, she accepted. She accepted yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. She knew it was happening, but Ooh. she really, um, in a heart of hearts, Ooh. wasn't entirely convinced Ooh. it was going to work. Yeah, absolutely. We get well, it did. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, it did, Sammy. It did. It did. Right. So this is part two. We had dinner. We're settled, are you comfortable? Yeah, very. <laughs> okay, good. And we're now gonna move into 2015. Mm-hmm. So you've moved into the flat, you're in there, and what Hazel, what you said to me once is the honeymoon period. Mm. So tell me what that was like, the first few months living in your flat with Barry. It was good. And we... You enjoyed the freedom, didn't you? Yeah, the freedom of the flat. And go and do anything you want in there. Could, could do anything you want, couldn't you? Mm-hmm. So Hazel, what were those first few months like? And you've talked a bit, you started to see something change as well. So what went on then? Yeah, the, the first few months, um, they were enjoying being living independently, enjoying the space and um, the freedom, staying up late and mm-hmm. calling the shots. <laughs> I mean, stay at home. Yeah. You know, just... Yeah. just absorbing all of that um staff that um, were working with them they had some really great um individuals supporting but there were there were some staff that where things didn't gel mm. and you could see very clearly that there was a bit of a mismatch in terms of personality temperament mm. Mm. so and that was clearly affecting um you know the well-being that sort of mental emotional well-being mm. um of sam so Clearly, there had to be some changes made, mm. and so we started talking about, you know, going back to the basics. What do you want in in your in support staff? And we started looking at that and looking in a broader sense. Um, what do you want to do also? Because the time, as far as the, her, she was in a new home, but her her timetable was the same. There was no change there. So whilst the space was new, the everyday routine you know the services and what mm, have you mm. they were the same mm. so there was dissatisfaction there and you could see there was room mm. for improvement and there was and some we got together with, with sally mm. one evening and we talked about mm. what does good support look like and what yeah. you want and if you had a choice who would you choose who would you pick and mm. that's when we started looking really looking seriously at how we could change mm. your day-to-day mm. routine and make it yeah. fit you mm. Mm. And some really important stuff about you want someone who's going to have fun with you. Yeah. You also want someone who's going to encourage you to try new things. Mm. You want someone who wouldn't panic when you had a seizure. Yeah. Would just say, come on, Sammy, what do you want to do that's going on with life? And you wanted to be safe as well, but you wanted that encouragement, mm. didn't you? Yeah. And that, Hazel, just describe how you figured out how to help Sammy employ PAs. A personal assistant. A personal assistant. One favourite one you've got now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a whole... Um, as we talk, you know, you, you kind of start doing your research and, mm. and discussions lead you to sort mm. of think about various other things. And this whole thing about direct payments and the fact that it's your ability to purchase what you want because yeah. that money belongs to you, effectively. Yeah. Even though yeah. the budget may have been diverted through to the provider, in this case, um, the company that was supporting Samantha in, to live independently, mm those funds were still Samantha's and they could be redirected to buy in what she wanted. Mm. So um, started looking at, again, going back to that, that meeting we had, what do you want? Who am I? Mm. What do I like? What don't I like? Who do I want to work with me? And we kind of went from there. And then we started looking mm. at where and how we could find this person, mm. these persons, mm. and that's how we mm. kind of started mm. the whole process. Yeah. And we also had to figure out how much money yeah. Sammy had, yeah. didn't we? Do you remember that? I mean, yeah. luckily you're good with numbers, aren't you? Yeah. But we yeah. had to sit here and we had them on big flip charts saying, actually, if we could have one hour of this, this is how much money we've got, how much could we pay someone per hour, and yeah. how much, you know, and that was hard, wasn't it, Sammy? Because yeah. you, you couldn't have everything you wanted, because yeah. you knew yeah. that we had to work with the money we had. <coughs> 
But actually, even then, we worked out you could do pretty well out of that, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. So that it wasn't easy, was it, to strip away those few days and say we want to do something different? No, it's not, because it goes against the grain. Mm. Because the providers, um, they hold the budget, so to speak. Mm. It, it's, it's veered into, into their, um, their hands. Mm. And they provide um, support at home. They provide the one to ones, and and that's just the way it is. But unless you kind of say no, I choose to mm. commandeer X funds because I want to do it, or Samantha wants to do this. Um, you mm. know, it, it it it's it's becomes a bit tricky. Mm. But you, it's your right. You can do it, and of course you need to sort of do your research to see what as as we did. Mm what we could afford and the hours and mm. so on but you can yeah. it's something that you can do so you sort of need to know you're entitled to do that you yeah. need to know that yeah. the money is for you sammy isn't yeah. it it's your money to live your life yeah. you also need to have the courage don't you to do it because you had to be brave together it wasn't yeah easy. It's, it's not it's not easy because you're going against the grain and i keep yeah. saying that because you are because the the the, the mm. kind of the system is geared and it's not particularly challenged it, in fact <laughs> it's not challenged no um, funds uh, they flow one way and they tend to stay that way mm. and unless you're really willing to um, go against the norm and say well look this is what we choose to do mm. you know mm. so mm. therefore we're going to go down this route and we're going to sort of you know redivert the funds from from you know you to, to some other place yeah um, you know mm. it, it, it's, it's, it's a tricky conversation to mm. have um, and mm. there's resistance there and there's resistance but the bottom line is and, and that's what you always have to come back to it's about choice it's not about any individuals or bodies or anything it's about enhancing and adding value to Samantha's life and when it comes when you strip it back and it comes down to that that's what it's about so come what may mm. you kind of suck it up and you get on with it <laughs> absolutely mm. was it worth it Sammy? <laughs> so we're still in 2015 we're edging towards 2016 actually aren't we because we met at the end of 2015 to think about the type of supporter you wanted and you were being brave enough to say do you know what we want to take some of the money to direct payment and we want to employ directly your own personal assistant so what's that like Sammy having your personal assistant now Brilliant. yeah wonderful and what's one of the really exciting things you did with I've Kate, them, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I've got them off my tattoo. Which you wanted for a long time, haven't you? Should yeah. we show them on camera? Yeah. Are you going to show the tattoo? Yeah. Come on. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So Sammy's got a tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. And what was lovely is that you know not all family members may love tattoos mm. and stuff, but actually it was like. That's what you want, Sammy. Yeah. You've got a good support. You're going to figure out where to have that done safely. And you went off, didn't you? I think you sent us all pictures that day, didn't you, via text? Mm -hmm. Done it. Yeah. Done it. <laughs> and what, you know. what, what I love about um, her PA, she, she has um, three, mm. and they, they alternate. But what, what I really like is the fact that, and what I've always wanted, is someone that will stretch her, take her outside of her comfort zone, yeah. and expand and enrich her life mm. and she gets that and, there's, and there are limitations and there's certain things that she still have to be very cautious about and there's got to be risk assessed but it's about living a life and having someone support you to explore those those dreams those desires mm. Mm. as well as the sort of the mundane things which have to be done the dentist mm. the hospital appointments and so it's it's great and it gives me a level of comfort that if I know that there's something that needs to be done I can say can you support someone to do this? Help with her finances, help her to get more confident with, with her money, counting, mm -hmm. learning how to mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. Things like that, that is really, again, adding value. And it's made such a difference, hasn't it? Absolutely. So to you, Sammy, I, I, I'm just amazed that just the few months you've been, you know, we have, we have one that you love yeah. being with, one PA you love mm -hmm. being with, and typically you might spend a couple of days a week with her. Yeah. But I remember the interview in Costa Coffee, the three of us, you remember, yeah. we were sitting there and we, we were interviewing these two people that had come along and what the hell's going on? Mm -hmm. And instantly, I think we all felt, didn't we, there was someone in this one PA, they were both lovely, but in this one PA, there's a real yeah. connection between both of you. It wasn't just, 
it wasn't necessarily one was more skilled than the other. It was just a connection mm -hmm. between hu two human beings yeah. Yeah. that had that was genuine. But it had, as you said, Hazel, we knew that the PA we're thinking of w was going to mm -hmm. challenge and explore with you. And yeah. that's, I remember you being so thrilled about. Yeah. And you connected, didn't you? It was just that, you know what, that, you know. It just, it's just lovely, isn't it? Because in the end, that's what good support's about, isn't it? Actually, two people get each other yeah. and have that back. There was one day when you phoned me, Hazel. I'm talking to Hazel again, Sammy, about yeah. you. But I just think there was one day when Hazel mm. phoned me, really excited, because you had been <laughs> outspoken in the flat. And do you remember that, Hazel? Mm, I do. What was it that just really got you and wanted you to phone and celebrate? It, it was, um, Sam was, you were, you were interviewing another PA. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's, and it's, Sadly, it's the norm, and if you don't, if you, you're not kind of sensitive to it, you don't catch it. But she came along with her other colleague, and given that this was an interview, seeing whether or not she connected with, with Samantha, yeah. um, she sat there, and I'm not suggesting she did it the entire time, but there was no effort to connect or to get mm -hmm. to know or mm -hmm. anything. And I remember. Um, saying to you afterwards mm. you know trying to get feedback um what did you think is it is, you know she's a nice lady do you think you can work with her do you want to work with her and you said no and i said well why and he said well she didn't talk to me and i thought wow uh, because 12 months prior to that mm. you'd have probably have said oh it's okay and mm -hmm. you'd have just gone with it mm. and accepted it as being well this is it you know this is the way it is but she said no she didn't talk to me she oh. talked to the mm. other lady she wasn't mm. trying to get mm. to know me no, and, it didn't. and I thought that's growth because as I said prior to that it wouldn't have come up on her radar that that just was wrong it wasn't right um and that's when I rang you and said, you'll never guess what our girl did. You know, <laughs> she said no. And, you know, and, um, and that's where I saw growth again. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was just a little mile. There have been many milestones, but that was one where I thought, this is huge. Yeah. In as much as Sammy saying, asserting her right to choose and having the right kind of support, support that because they engage with her on her terms in the right in way, her home. in her home, <laughs> yeah. everything. And yeah. I thought, yeah. it's another milestone, and, it, and I was delighted. Yeah. And as a result of that, um, you know, we moved on and found another lady, and, yeah. you know, she connected, she... Mm. And, it helped. Mm. Yeah, and it was, it was so, good. I can see by your face, like, she's so, so excited. Mm. So excited. Mm. And I think there's something your mum's seen as well. She mentioned that your mum wasn't sure about Sammy moving, but where's your mum now in that, that whole my experience? My mum can see the growth, she can see the change. My mum can see clearly that it was a good move mm. and she's happier knowing that Samantha is in an environment where she is cared for by the staff that are, are working are working with you. Mm. And, and also that, you know, I She's come home weekend. Yeah, still, you do go home still sometimes. very much yeah. part of the family, mm -hmm. um, and you know, my mum, she, she's pleased. And even though there was reluctance, and she couldn't see how, she couldn't see at all how this could mm. turn out good mm -hmm. with Samantha not mm -hmm. being under her wing, under her yeah. care, being cosseted, being cared mm -hmm. for. And you know, yeah. she can see clearly now that there was definitely, and there is definitely. That, that move, that, that stepping out, of, it was, it was a, a move of faith and courage, but yeah. she can see now that yeah. it was a good one. Right. Yeah. You mentioned faith and courage then, and I'm really interested. We talked on film about your life, Sammy, just from 2013, yeah. where you, were, you, weren't, you weren't excited by life. You were just, I could see you going a bit flat, and you weren't the sparkly Sammy we know and love. And from 2013 to 2016, your life has been a bit like a roller coaster, up and down. So not sure, excited, moving in, mm. and then coming mm. down, going on the honeymoon mm. periods over yeah. and having to come up again. And you're on and up at the moment, aren't you? Which is really exciting. Yeah. What is it, both of you, that made that happen? What, what made that happen in your life? For me, I think it was 
it's, it's, that, it's that picture. It, it, we go back to your kitchen table in mm. 2013 and saying, this is mm. what I want. Mm. And using that as a blueprint almost. Mm. Mm. And sort of looking at that in 2015 and saying, well, where are we? Um, not even looking at 2015, just looking at that, keep losing it as a reference point mm, mm, mm. and trying to bring in those elements of satisfaction, mm. quality of life, mm. um, value and all of that. Mm. Um, and wherever we weren't meeting that, mm. even that, that, that basic threshold of quality of life, satisfaction, mm. being happy, mm. contented, mm. addressing it. And, you know, it was having mm. sometimes very frank and very yeah. honest and very sometimes difficult mm. conversations and having those conversations with others mm. in order to make feelings known and what have mm. you. Mm. But throughout all of that, it was a case of just trying to come back to that blueprint. This is what we're trying to achieve. This is what we want. This is about the quality of life. It's about expanding, enriching. Mm. And it's, it always has to come back to that. It does, doesn't it? And grow with Sammy. Because Sammy's grow. changed. You've changed Absolutely. so much, Sammy. Yeah. yeah. And if I look at you, I go, what made it happen is you were flipping brave. Mm -hmm. You yes. were able to be strong mm -hmm. with your mum and say, I love you, mum, mm -hmm. but I don't want to live here forever. <laughs> you know, yeah. you were confident yeah. with Hazel, have really difficult conversations with Hazel yeah. sometimes and Hazel with you. You've put up with some disappointments along yeah. the way, but you keep, keep having the strength to get up, don't you, and get on. And you two together, I just think it's wonderful. I mean, what I see of your relationship now and how close you are but also how strong you are together and how challenging you are to Jez. You have the odd strop with each other, don't you? you know, have, the, have the days. Yeah. Yeah. We've just sung the sister song, but it is that, isn't it? And that's that whole thing. So, And it's partly the belief in you, Sally, I think, that your family absolutely believed in you, even though for years they didn't know what that meant, in a sense. And it was like, we're scared. We, we love her so much, we need to keep Sammy safe. And it was until you were free to flourish and see, and Hazel, are you grabbing hold of actually, do you know what, families, we do have the right to have a voice. We have the right to be heard. We, you know, no one loves Sammy more than family. Yeah. And, and listening to you, Sammy, yeah. and doing that and being brave was amazing. So it took real determination, loads of love, loads of courage, mm -hmm. loads of creativity, lots of, I guess, you know, courage, you said bravery, but it, there's the skill, I suppose, and the confidence as well to know actually we can handle a bit of money and we can make it work out. Mm -hmm. We can find ways of thinking about what good support is for you and finding somebody that might not be in the normal way, but we can do it. And I think that all that stuff comes together. and I, It's just been amazing. And you're not finished yet, are you? No. It's only 2016, and goodness knows, where might you be in 2018, 2019? So what tips would both of you give to other people with learning difficulties and their families? Don't give up. Be responsible. And tell your parents that you love them. And you just want to fly and do your own stuff. Mm. You want to fly and do your own stuff. Wonderful. Hazel? I would say it's cliche, but dare to dream. None of us get what we want, in, you know, entirely in life, but dare to say, well, this is what I want and support, you know, your loved one to, to dream. Tell, you know, put it down on paper and so everyone can see what it is. And, and you know, sometimes it may not be as far reaching or out of, of, out of reach as you may think initially. Um, have the courage to do that. Allow them to have their dreams. And even if you think, you know, that's not going to work, it's never going to happen, who's to say it can't? Um, speak to the right people, keep speaking to people. Um, and you know it's great you share information you ask questions and you know you'll soon find out what's possible who to speak to um, just keep asking questions um, and even when it looks as though the system if I can use that word mm -hmm. is entrenched and there seems to be a block and you can't get through it if you know your rights and you know that something belongs to you it belongs to you and it's your right then you have the right to take whatever it is and, and push through that barrier. And if it's your right, you know, no one can stop you. They, can, well, they can't stop you, can they? Yeah, so they can. might not be happy, but you know, take one foot in front of the other and just keep, just keep moving forward. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sound advice. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sally.
was alive.